In thyroid eye disease, the muscles are one of the target organs and initially what happens to the muscles is that they become swollen. So that means that the patient finds it difficult to move the eye muscles, they feel tight, they often have pain, particularly looking up. And then after a period where the muscles are swollen and you can see that on imaging, they become scarred and stiff and then the patient has even more difficulty moving the eye muscles and that for the patient results in double vision, seeing two images at the same time. It's necessary for patients to have squint surgery when they have double vision that you can't drive with double vision for example, so it's when it gets in the way of their life. If they've got pain looking upwards because they've got stiff tight muscles not allowing that to happen, they often find it much more comfortable to do that. And then finally, even if you don't have double vision, it is possible that you just do not look very good because the eyes aren't properly aligned. And then that is very beneficial to have surgery to make you look more normal. There are different types of squint surgery that patients with thyroid disease can have. The two are having all the surgery done with you asleep, and that's called fixed muscle surgery. And that means that you have your general anaesthetic and the surgeon puts the muscles in a predetermined position and the operation is complete when you come out of theatre. The other one is what we call adjustable suture surgery. And that's where most of the surgery is done with you asleep but we don't tie the final knots until after you've woken up and we then measure you, have a look at you and decide whether the eye position is optimal. If it's suboptimal, we can pull the muscle or loosen the muscle using the untied strings and then we finish off tying it with you, the patient awake. So that's the adjustable two-stage surgery. Patients with thyroid eye disease require really two sorts of surgery. They either require horizontal because they can't move their muscles from side to side or they require vertical because they've got a problem looking up or down or an imbalance in that procedure. Now they may require a mixture of both and a very few patients have twisting um, of the eye muscles because the, the muscles which do what we call torsion are also involved. That is much less common. So patients either usually have a horizontal problem where they get the images side by side, a vertical where the images are above each other, but a combination is, is not uncommon. Before an operation, we're obviously going to reassess their muscle balance because how much surgery is required depends on the eye position before you start operating. So usually within a couple of weeks of the operation you will come to clinic. We will do what we call an orthoptic assessment which means we have a muscle balance assessment done on you and also at that same time we would like you to, to go through a medical pre-assessment with our nursing team to make sure that you're healthy, your blood pressure is okay, if you're on tablets that your blood chemistry is satisfactory. Surgery, like all surgery, has risks and benefits. The, the benefits we hope are that the eyes are much better aligned and you have virtually no or no double vision and that they are more comfortable and they look as good as we can make them. From the point of view of risks, there's always anaesthetic risks which we need to make sure are assessed adequately before an operation. But the specifics for the squint operation are that there will always be little scars on the surface on the white of the eye, not your face, where we have to move the skin to get at the muscles underneath. The eyes will be red and inflamed for anything up to 10 weeks after surgery whilst the stitches dissolve safely in the eye. Very rarely um, you can make a little hole in the retina when reattaching the muscle which needs some laser treatment. But one thing that we're always concerned about is that thyroid muscles, because they're tight, are much more likely to stretch. And so the eye position, which was good after surgery, can deteriorate over weeks and months after surgery. So we have to be careful to put that into our planning procedure. After surgery, if you're having fixed surgery, in other words, where everything's being done at the same time, you will have some cream put in the eye and a pad put on the eye, and you will come out of theatre into the recovery area, and then you'll go back up to the ward um, you know, to be settled prior to your discharge home. If you're having the adjustable surgery, you may or may not have a pad on after the operation, and about half an hour before the adjustment, you'll get about six drops of anaesthetic put in at five minute the intervals to make sure the eye is numb and often a drop to stop any bleeding. 
and then you will have your adjustment done and when that's complete you'll have the final pad put on before being ready to go home.